Welcome, Twitch and YouTube. Vintage League, Wednesday night. Started a little late today because I was pretty exhausted after work. I wanted to take a nap. So, But we're here. We're here. 9 p.m. Eastern. Um, I'm going to just play some probably more serious decks as we start getting closer to Eternal Weekend. And as much as... Go back. As much as I loathe to say, I do think that eight cast is something that should definitely be on people's radar uh, for Eternal Weekend. It's currently putting up basically the best numbers of any of the decks. And it's still got like a low play rate compared to some of the other decks, but among decks with a reasonable play rate, it has some of the highest win rate numbers. Um, if you haven't seen this deck before, we played it a couple of months ago on stream, but it's been a little bit refined since then. It is a blue combo affinity shell that plays eight thought cast effects so four thought cast four thought monitor uh picking up the name eight cast is it the best name no is it an okay name yes uh is a tinker deck it's basically a turbo tinker deck it's got um seat of the cyanod urza saga tons and tons and tons of artifacts more artifacts than po way more artifacts than po um, and it also ends up playing uh, Emery Bobble as a as a grindy engine, and Urza Saga kind of shores up some of the the, um, the weaknesses you have to things like uh, Null Rod. It beats down very fast. It combos and draws out really fast. Vault Key with Saga is obviously pretty good, and it plays the full four Flusterstorms, um, ignoring things like Brainstorm, No Fetches, um, Ponder, Preordain. This has no Cataxium Probe, which is a nice, interesting call. Um, and then another land here. So 14 lands. Um, debatable whether you want to be tinkering to Citadel in a deck that contains four additional five drops, four additional seven drops, um, some four drops. But theoretically, it should be okay because you're just going to win the game anyways. You'll just draw a bunch of cards uh, and it'll all be fine. You also have, obviously, Tinker Sphinx for the probably problematic bug matchup where opponents play Collector Oof. Um, anything else? Sideboard is Graveyard Hate, Mirror Hate, Oof Hate. Uh, oh, interesting, all four Hercules are in the sideboard. Maybe not respecting shops very much, but I guess you don't have a Merchant Scroll, so there's no way to... to uh, you have no Merchant Scroll and no Mystical Tutor, so there's no way to tutor for Hercules Recall, which makes the one of not as good. And then obviously a couple more counter spells. These kind of these disputes ruined me when I played against this deck last weekend, so interested to see how they go today. We already have our match, so let's go jump into round one. Round one here versus Matt to the Sea. Let's begin. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just play a turn one thought monitor. Question would be, do we want to wait and hold up Flusterstorm? We could also go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Is the Telerian Academy? The Telerian Academy makes two mana, which is the same number that the Seed of the Cyanon makes, right? So did I count wrong? One, two, three, four, five. Sorry, no. One, two, three, four, five. So that was way off. What, the, how, 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 what am I doing? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right, maybe we have enough to just keep and play Thought Monitor, probably. I don't know. I think it's probably fine. Maybe I should be leading. No, they're just going to F6. Well, I'm going to slam a Thought Monitor. Boom, boom, boom. All right, cool. I get to leave open uh, Flusterstorm. I don't think they have... I think they're probably on shops then if they're going to F6, but maybe Flusterstorm will still be viable. No, they're not on shops. Interesting. All right, well, a Saga will help me find a Lotus to get me to Citadel. I could also draw just any of our blue action spells. Those all work. Hello, blue action spell. I think the question immediately becomes, are we supposed to tinker for a Black Lotus? <laughs> I 
think the answer is probably yes. I guess I can just sack this mana crypt. Gets rid of future problems. Sorry. A little lucky there, seeing as I had no land drop to give, but... Ooh, shuffled and found nothing. Well, we died at Doomsday here, which is probably not good, but... I mean, the other op alternative was to tutor for uh, Sphinx, right? So... All right, whew, just got scared right there. I thought we were going to get Doomsday and die. Ah, just Oath of Druids. Yeah, I'm really not sold on Oath of Druid decks in Vintage. I think they're just not very good. All, all of the varieties. I'm not, I've not been impressed. It's just so slow. So slow. Like, my opponent's dead here. Very dead here. God, it's such, it's such a bad Citadel deck. It's crazy. Uh... Alright, whatever. That's enough. I don't know. It doesn't really matter anymore. Back. I got pretty lucky, I think. Like, the only reason I won is because my opponent played a bad deck. Right? Like, if my opponent simply played Doomsday there, I lost the game. That's my problem with this Citadel deck, is that it just... It uses Citadel so poorly. Like I, I played a Citadel, right? It did like it made one thing and then blanked, and then I gave my opponent the opportunity to win the game. So if my opponent was playing a real deck where they were playing a PO or they were playing a, like any other deck that could win the game in one turn, I would just lose. But thankfully they played an oath, it's 2021, and they lost. So I don't know. That's just how I feel. We'll see. Um, what do we want? Uh, we saw Bug Color Oath, so probably a combo Oath variant. I assume we would want Graft Digger's Cage, so that we can tutor that up off of Saga. Maybe we want Needle, so that we can tutor that up off of Saga for, like, an Oko. Yeah, for sure, but, like, or, or, hear me out, hear me out, you tinker for Citadel in a deck that actually can use it, and you win the game on the same turn most of the time. All right, Sasha, what do you what do you want to board in versus Bug Oath? I don't think I want a Sphinx. Sphinx looks pretty bad. Obviously, Cage Citadel is not a combo, but I don't really think that matters. Unless we want to be like playing Karn and then looking for Cage that way. Or we could just not care about Cage at all because Oath things. Do we want to be boarding out Emery's as they're pretty bad against Oath, or do we not? I don't know, actually. I really haven't played very much versus Oath. I think that makes a lot of sense to me. And then... Oh, there's already a Needle in the main. All right, I'm good. I'm going to board out Emery's and Sphinx for Disputes and Cage. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, and hopefully we just don't hit our Cage when we, <laughs> when we go to Citadel combo.
Um, unfortunate. No bueno. Try again. Guess it's fine. I have a saga, right? I think I would rather speculate on Metalcraft than Lady of the Island. Like, if I were to hit a Moxin, then I could play Narset on turn one. Yeah. They mulligan pretty heavily. They're down to only a couple cards left in their hand. Two cards are left in their hand. And yeah, they mulligan to five. And we have a force, so we're in great shape this game, especially if we can just, like, play Narset on turn one with a Mox draw. Where's his bobble? Ah, Saga. The classic Oath Saga deck. I'm really still not sold on Oath and Saga together, but mm. we are going to have to beat Saga tokens here, and we currently don't do that for what it's worth. If we play Saga now, we can search up things, but we won't have our own Saga tokens. Um, so I think we don't play Saga now because we need to make sure we get Saga tokens. Our Saga tokens should be bigger than theirs, so it should be fine later. We just need to draw into some mana producing things. No, that's incorrect. The best counterplay to Saga tokens is just to play Drafts Down. But bigger Saga tokens is reasonable. Fortunately, we're not really getting very far here. Uh, we might lose before we are able to make Saga Tokens. So this costs three and I can't cast it. Yeah, all right. Am I gonna get my Saga Natures claimed? That would be hilarious. I would have done that probably with the trigger on the stack, but the question is, will we make it in time? I'm not sure we will. Oh, well, we did get nature's claimed. That's funny. Yeah, see, simply just having a dress down here means they have nothing, but... We're not playing Dress Down, we're playing big, bigger Saga tokens, so we gotta hopefully draw into something that'll help us. Also, their tokens are now unblockable, which is problematic, so the bigger token plan is not gonna work anyways. Huh, I'm seeing flaws with this idea, Slasher. Not, not thrilled with this. We're probably gonna have to combo them out by drawing through our whole deck, I would assume. Man, this deck, dude. Oh, this deck. This deck, this deck, this deck. So I play this, pay life. This can make me a one, two, three, three. That dies, and then it gives us another turn, though. I don't know. Uh, as you can tell, uh, I'm very unenthused with this deck. I'm not a huge fan. Um, but it, I would be not doing my due diligence if I didn't try it. So now I think Saga tokens probably don't matter. Um, we just want to find the things that produce us the most possible mana to try to combo off this turn. I guess the answer to that would... Well, I guess the Saga token could have mattered if we had needled Manifold Key. And maybe we're still supposed to needle Manifold Key. So if I play a Manifold... Uh, if I play Needle, Bobble, Opal, Seat, I can play Thoughtcast for one blue. I just need to find two blockers to get another turn. Needling Key is a little awkward because it's one of our better ways of winning. 
we could go for our own key, and that way we can draw into a, a winning combo turn. Or we could simply get Soul Ring, which is going to produce us a lot of mana towards Thought Monitor. I actually don't hate the idea of just going our own key and trying to combo. Um, I don't think it's super likely, but it could be possible. I think that's just like a good identification of where we are at in this game. So I'm I'm not I'm down. Sometimes you're lucky, I guess. All right. Well, sometimes draw two is actually demonic tutor. Interesting. Very interesting. Okay, here we go. Round two. Beebs. Um, turn one Emery. Doesn't let me hold up Fluster, but looks fine otherwise. I was tragic feeling. I guess there's like some amount of... So it's like a decent amount of inherent risk in this play against things like Force of Vigor, but I can at least bait a Force of Vigor but right here. Because this is a, decent, a reasonable spot to Vigor, but I have Luster Storm. Maybe that mitigates a little bit. I don't know if it actually mitigates at all, but... Um, I'd rather my Emery did not get... Mind break trapped, so I'm gonna just cast it like this. Justin, why are you playing around mind break trap? Well, I got mind break trap today and I'm scarred. What can I say? Alright, so obviously I guess we're like not terrible with a resolved emery against Vigor where we still have the ability to replay Sapphire. Um we hit pretty badly on our emery, no zero drops, which means I currently have no way to activate my saga, which is bad. <laughs> I was hoping the emery would hit us a zero drop to bring back and then we can use these to activate even like a bobble because then we could use these to activate our saga and we'd be in good shape or even a moxin which would let us activate our saga and hold up fluster. Never mind, we don't have a saga anyways. All right, so what do we want here? We just want a zero drop so that we can play. If a, mo a zero drop Moxon, just play an art, play an Arcep. Um, C to the Cyanod, reasonable as well. Thought cast. I don't know, Slasher. This deck just not for me, man. Not for me. All right. I I mean, we're not in a bad spot. I mean, we have draws that let us play magic but currently we don't play too much magic however we have mental misstep and fluster storm so if they're on like bug we have a counter spell which is nice ah that is not what we wanted to see that is really really problematic for us because just erased half our hand <sighs> okay yeah Ah, man. Bill named Mox Oval. I'm lucky, really. All right. Well, that is a good draw for sure. Uh, one, two, three. So I can't play anything this turn, but I can at the very least draw and replay, which is probably worth. I really hope they don't cast that spell. Um, yeah, the reason I didn't want to crack this bobble now is because if they have another revoker, I want to make sure I can still opal. 
And if I didn't hit a zero, I need the... <laughs> Uh, now it's good to crack because I don't have any mi Oh, oh yes. Oh. Aha! Psych! Your soul is mine. Uh, this is a small moral victory. Um, I think I have to keep around this bobble. I can always replay it for one next turn by waiting. Yikes. I'm just so dead. It just doesn't matter. The cards we hit were not conducive to us winning this game, and obviously having Flusterstorm missed up against... against Golos is just never going to work out. My opponent is on four mana. They need to get to seven mana. So simply a workshop will get them to statue, and then I can concede. All right, they have a Saga leaving them still on five mana, which doesn't cast Golos, which is good for us. Unfortunately, this matchup, they're going to bring in Nullrod's post board, and we're going to bring in Hercules, and it'll be a Mexican standoff of some kind. It's possible I'm supposed to crack this, but I don't think losing out on our blue mana is probably bad, because if I draw like an Urza Saga, I want to be able to cast Soul Ring. So this doesn't let us cast Soul Ring. Can still cycle a bobble if I want. I can cycle two bobbles now. Or I can leave open force. Leaving open force doesn't seem good unless they cast statue. If they simply go for saga tokens, it's not very good. You can always hold back this Emery and block, though. So maybe it makes sense to hold back Emery, don't take any more damage, hold up Force of Will. I'm still one short on Thought Cast. Can't play this Soul Ring unless I use my blue source next turn. I could just crack this anyways and draw two. Draw another card. But I don't think I need to make that decision right now. I think I'm just going to hold up Emery Force. Which makes the only real viable line for them activate Saga. Which is fine. Not good for me. I have no Hercules in the main. So I kind of have to overpower this. Is this... Okay. That's plus one mana. So they can play statue. If they want to play statue, they can play statue, in which case our line would have worked out very well. I feel like it's very tempting for them to play statue. It locks up the game if it resolves. But they did notice we didn't bobble when last turn we bobbled in this similar situation. So it'll be interesting to see if they make the read that we're holding up for us. Looks like they've made the read. If my opponent attacks into my Emery, I will snap lock it. I would have never blocked faster in my life. Really? Am I missing something? This seems great for me. Now I'm going to keep this bobble in play. Serve as artifact mana. So 
So this costs eight minus five, three. I couldn't play a thought monitor. I just can't force unless I draw and land. Uh, I mean, the problem is, I guess I could just play a top. Yo, know, what's up, Bert? Hmm. Well, they attacked with such conviction, Wombo, that I feared that I was missing something. But in fact, my squire with no text was in fact a squire with no text. I guess it's not a squire if it's a three mana card, huh? Though I did play it for two mana. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, they, yeah, they can play statue here. Needle on top, sure. That's fine. He got me. All right, statue, I assume. Statue being cast frees us up to start playing magic, so. Oh, I can't let this resolve either, right? That's unfortunate. They have two cards that I must counter. Hmm. Is this a must counter? Am I dead? No, I have blockers. These are just these are just constructs. I feel like I have to counter this. So if I can tinker for a Sphinx, maybe. Mm, gonna need to bobble into a force, right? That is notably not a force. <sighs> okay. Maybe they'll go squatter me. Yes. 
I mean, you don't know that they're playing a Null Rod in the main deck, right? Saga draw. Um, it's likely we don't beat a statue if they play an additional cre uh, artifact, right? I guess they might not have any artifacts left. Because if they play a statue and an artifact, we take seven and then one and die. One, two, three, four. One, two. So three. I'm actually still too short on Sphinx, so I would have to hit like Academy probably. It looks like fair for Null Rod is happening, which is also killing us. Like, I don't think I can count. I don't think I can let the Golos resolve, can I? I think I have to counter the Golos. Right, they have a Null Rod in the main. The nice thing here is if I did hit a Force, I actually think I'm in good shape. Maybe not good shape, but playable shape. It's killing me. I die. If I let Golos resolve, I get attacked for lethal. Gotta do the combat math. I won 3k playing PLO today. Well, that's dope. Congrats. Uh, Karn, Urkels. Do you bring in Dismember for Revoker or no? Do you bring in Needle? I'm trying. Needing. I definitely want four Hercules for four Fluster. That's that's an easy trade. I think one-sided Null Rod for Mental Misstep is a reasonable trade. And then the question is, do I want Dismembers? Do I want more Needles? Dismember targets being Golos and Revoker. Needle target being Wasteland, Saga, Ghost Quarter, Etc. I assume it's just the uh, you don't have room for it, Arkan. But I don't know. I, I didn't make this most recent list. Do we just abandon Citadel entirely and only play Sphinx battles? That doesn't seem unreasonable. I don't know. I don't actually know for these two how the value is. I would assume that Needle is very good, but I don't know how good Dismember is. I don't know the answer. Still on the play. Sure. That's reasonable. I also still don't know what I'm cutting. Um, any, any, a bobble maybe? A bobble. What a weird hand. Probably worth keeping though. Have force, turn one key in top. Saga, they have to answer. Probably should have sequenced 
top first to get not get mind break trapped. Not sure. Can force their first null rod and then maybe. This one's not great against us, but like the follow up workshop null rod, which I guess I can't counter anyways. <laughs> Yeah, what's up, Jeremy? This is the worst outcome, probably. The fact that I don't even know if they have follow-up Soul Land plus Hate Piece. I mean, I can Saga. This doesn't stop me from Sagaing. But... Uh, I think I'm just full of a priced into this, but I don't really... I guess follow-up is pretty rough for me. No Rod. I mean, the nuts is the nuts. They do have to beat their own mana crypt, so. Yeah. Ooh. The problem is it doesn't do anything. So I have to just hope I don't get wastelanded and get to their end step. I just have to hope I don't get wastelanded here. Saga is only giving us mana for one turn before it fades away and does nothing. And now it's giving us nothing. Ah, uh, yeah. I don't know. The game's pretty rough. So this is my, this is the biggest problem with Saga in my mind is it's just so vulnerable. Not much we can do here. Not much we can do. <sighs> yep. Yeah, I mean, that is probably got to be one of the top draws you can have against these style decks is Mana Crypt, Turn Off Force. I guess theoretically I could have not played my key out to leave myself with the ability to play a force through a thing. Oh cool, I'm getting wasteland locked too. And sagas. Beautiful. The fact that I have an island at all is very helpful, as I can still cast some spells. But um Yeah, this is like one of the biggest problems I have with the deck. Stuff like this. Just no counterplay. I wonder, maybe I'm supposed to hold key and give myself an extra mana so that way I can spin and hold force through a thorn. Maybe that's maybe that's a misplay on my part. Is that a misplay? My my prevailing heuristic of I want to play my spells before they cost more kind of carried me into the automatic decision of playing both of my one drops. But maybe that was something I needed to hold myself back from doing. Game is still not technically over. There are a series of draws like Academy, Hercules, Thought Monitor, Combo Kill, which is nice. And the whole reason that this game is not over is mostly due to the fact that we have a basic island, which we lucked into. They also don't think they can lose enough flips for this to matter. They would have to lose three more flips, and I would have to give three more turns. Two more turns three more turns yeah 
even I don't even I wouldn't lose that via mana crip. And I lose everything via mana crip. I forgot to tweet that I was live again. Man. Whatever. Did not choose to make another construct. That is odd to me. Why would you not choose to make another construct? You don't want to take two damage, but two damage doesn't change your multiples off of mana crypt, and it's going to vastly increase your clock. Does it not vastly increase the clock? It makes the kill on the next turn, does it not? Where right now, say they play an additional artifact, seven, nine... It is not a two-turn clock unless they find two artifacts. I guess they have a Saga, which is a second artifact on the next turn. So I'm not allowed to force this one because I need this Thought Monitor in case I draw Talarian Her to Hercules Recall or even just Island to Hercules Recall. So I can't use this force. Not that this Golos really matters at this point. Obviously, they're going to get a strip mine, so they can strip mine lock me. But my entire game plan right now revolves around drawing one of my three basic islands or my Telerian Academy. So four draws and 47, casting Hercules Recall, and then using my top and my Thought Monitor to draw me into Vault Key combo, which is doable. Um, four, and, four and 47, and then some percentage from there. So you're saying there's a chance. <laughs> All right. So what is the best way to sequence here? First things first is we should probably cast Thought Monitor. It's going to give me fresh cards. Only costs me one in a blue. And then I can look at my top three, see if there is a, to uh, a vault in there. If there's no vault, I can get rid of the top four, which means I have nothing. I can then spin again. I can't spin again if I want to draw vaults. That is unfortunate. I could do double activates on top. I think I'm just supposed to look. I'm like one mana. Sheesh. Okay. All right. New plan. New plan. So. Top. Activate key. Draw with top. Thought monitor into both of these. Uh, Might have missequenced that slightly. I might have missequenced that slightly, and I was supposed to go the other way. Ooh, I might have fucked that up, huh? Uh, yeah. No, no, I'm still good. I'm still good. I have Mana Crypt. Uh, mana Crypt is... Yeah. Oof. I, I definitely think I missequenced there. I don't know what I was supposed to do. That wasn't it, though. I can, I can tell you that much. That was not it. I think I missed sequence there. I'm not exactly sure. All right, so now we're really looking for a tinker as a way to get rid of this mana crypt and take infinite turns. I have about infinite mana to do so. Hello. All right, well, that's interesting. Yeah, we were a uh, four and forty-seven to draw Islander Talarian. Would Island have done it there? Let's think for a second. 
Um, Island may have still done it. Um, we would have lost out on some mana, but we would have just not taken the greediest sequence and just time walked. I think Island would have also won with those set of cards on top, which is interesting. Okay, so now we're on the draw. Um, do we have changes to make? Do we want to be boarding out Citadel on the draw? Do we want more dismembers? Do we want... I don't really know. Do I want to bring back more of these opals that I cut? Opals are... The, uh, sorry, bobbles? Bobbles seem pretty bad, to be honest. They probably cost mana. So I guess they make the emery better. Do we really care about dismembering things? I don't know if I really care about dismembering things. That's my problem. Well, yeah, I don't know. I don't know the answer. I don't know. Need more games. I'm going to try both bubbles and both dismembers out. Um, this looks like a trap hand. It does have an island. I think this hand's a trap. Yeah, it doesn't beat Sphere and it doesn't beat Null Rod, so I think they both I think it has to go. I mean, neither does this hand. But can we go to five? Forces don't get better when you keep mulliganing. But you could always mulligan into Force, Blue Card, Tinker, Mana Crypt Island. I'm not convinced this hand... I, I do think this hand is better than our 7, but I don't think it's much better than our 7. I think I'm going to bin this hand as well and just try to get better. We have London Mulligan, right? All right, this is definitely our hand that we're keeping. Just which cards are we getting rid of? Time Vault Bobble? Time Vault Bobble? Or maybe Time Vault Urza? And then I can go, if they play nothing, I have Seat, Jet, Bobble, Draw 2. I feel like it's highly unlikely I cast Urza because I can't cast it fast enough, probably. This is kind of magical Christmas land, hoping that my opponent does nothing, but <laughs> I mean, at least we have an island. I, I don't know what else to say. Yeah, Workshop Null Rod. Workshop Crucible. Huh. That is not a hand I would think about keeping. That's good for us. That is technically nothing. I'm going to leave these both in play. Let's see what our opponent does here. Maybe they have like Golos... Cru uh... This gets Jet, this gets Seat, and I'm back to not being able to cast anything. Maybe we do want Dismember. <laughs> mm. I mean, we're not really allowed to crack these. Kind of have to hope we draw another zero. That's decent, I guess. I 
I think it's probably Wasteland as it's the only visible thing. Like maybe it's supposed to be Ghost Quarter, but we have four islands to cycle through. Obviously, I could strip mine for the worst case scenario. I don't think so. I think it's just Wasteland. So currently we can cast Dawcast again. Oh, fuck me. Fuck me. Fuck me. Ah, uh, I mean, I guess I should have hit wait, strip mine. I don't know. Feels weird to hit strip mine there. Feels real weird to hit strip mine there. I don't know. Was I supposed to hit strip mine there? I mean, my opponent is still playing no taxing effects and no null rod. So there are like tons of great outs for me. Even Opal cast, Star cast. I, I, I think I made the correct play. I think I just, as is the usual. <laughs> Pain. I mean, I think it's not unreasonable to make a read that they kept the hand based on the power of Grossable Strip Mine, but then feels a little weird to get wastelanded. Am I supposed to be favored in this matchup? Because this matchup feels not fun. All right. I've got this one chance, this one opportunity to seize everything I ever wanted. It's just Urza, right? <laughs> it is, it's just it's just Urza, right? <laughs> it's just Academy, exactly four mana, Urza, make an additional four mana, thought cast, thought monitor, etc. That I mean, God, we're drawing some 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 bangers tonight. Banger alert! I guess I could still get tabbied out of this game. Uh, <laughs> one, two, three, four. So I can cast five. I can cast this for two and it makes one back. So I could still tinker after. I could draw into my Sphinx if I do this. What? What? Oh, I'm glad I didn't cast Tinker. Okay, new plan. End of turn, Hercules recall. <laughs> Actually, do I even need to end of turn Hercules Recall? Nothing threatens me yet. Probably don't even need to. All right, so I assume this gets strip mined. And then what? Is it insane to Hercules ourselves to cast Tinker? That sounds insane. No, God, yeah, they could have Caracas. I didn't even think about that. True. 
That sounds insane. What if they have second mind break trap, Goblin? <laughs> what if they have second mind break trap? <laughs> uh, um... I kind of think I'm just going to bounce their shit. It seems reasonable to me. I don't think it's necessary. I might be able to get away with not doing it, but... Oh god, it's going to happen again. It's going to happen again. Not like this. Don't worry, I'll play around Mind Break Trap this time. Do I have a Citadel in my deck? I'm at 12. Okay, I did cut it. Okay. Should we just get another Thought Monitor instead? Oh, I'm so bad. Wait, am I so bad? I could have tapped my Sphinx and played Needle and named Strip Mine. I'm bad. If I just name Caracas. Or I mean, I guess I'm, I guess I can't get Tabernacle. Yeah, I mean, Tabernacle is like the way I lose this game, right? Not Caracas. My opponent goes... No, because they have I have an Urza. Yeah, so Carac... Yeah, they have too many things they need to do. Okay, right, I think we're fine. I think we're fine. I'm not sure that was ideal, but... I can't believe we're winning this. Something had to have gone wrong here. Maybe it was the top deck Talarian twice. <laughs> like, I feel like I got so lucky. <laughs> I'm not really talking about needling Tabernacle. I'm talking about thinking about what beats me. And what my game plan is. Should be good here, though. Oh, they can revoke. Oh, I'm an idiot. Oh, I'm an idiot. Note to self, Herkling, my opponent, was bad. Wow. That Yeah, okay. So now we know I should not have cast Herkles Recall on my opponent. No, no, no. All they have to do here is top deck tabernacle, and I lose. I played this badly. I played this game very badly. I played this game very, very badly. Ha casting Hercules for basically no value, basically negative value. We didn't get punished, but that was the this is the serious downside. I did not think about it at the time. All right. I mean, I lose to a, a Golos now. I played terribly. Oh, 
see if I die. Uh, yeah, I guess I should have played my land. It doesn't really matter, right? Well, yeah, I guess I could have played my land, cast thought cast, and then drawn blue card force. See, I, I just wanted to save myself from getting tilted, you know? Oh, I, no, I, no, that doesn't save me from, no, 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 no. That's not how that works, Lyserg. My opponent plays a Golos, gets a Tabernacle, Crucible's back, strip mine, and kills my land. That's not, that doesn't actually lose. That actually doesn't. The, I do think it's a punt not to try to thought cast into blue card force. I mean, the biggest punt was Hercules recalling my opponent at all. I do think that I'm probably supposed to take three damage, cast thought cast, and hope to draw blue card force so that I can beat a Golos. So. No, I should not have needled stripped. I think needling wasteland was correct. It was a pretty crazy to win that game. I played pretty poorly down the stretch. This Hercules recall was the single worst play of the game, though. Oh, the second one? The second one maybe was supposed to name strip mine because I fucked up and bounced Revoker so that Urza was going to get... I forgot about... I mean, obviously, naming this naming Caracas is based on the idea that my Urza is going to make mana, which I forgot it was no longer going to make mana because I fucked... Like, we didn't... I didn't realize... That I had fucked up on the Hercules recall to give them a revoker to name Urza. I just did I didn't realize that, so that didn't really that wasn't even part of my my second needle calculation. Though, to be fair, I probably should have gone Sphinx Tap Blue Needle Strip Mine Play Urza Saga. Right? I think I did a lot wrong in the ending set there. I think I did a lot wrong. All right. Round three of our eight cast league. The deck has uh, kind of been carrying us. That's some pretty strong draws. Is this a keeper? I guess any zero job artifact gives me turn one for Ancestral with Flusterstorm back up. So sounds like a keeper to me. All right, well, F6 value, that's always nice. Like our best outcome is what? Draw a Sapphire or something. Draw like a Moxin. Go Moxin, Mishra, Academy, Ancestral with Fluster backup. Try hit multiple Moxin, Thought Monitor. I guess we have to be aware my opponent also is preordained underground C deck, so it might be Doomsday. That's unfortunate. Still could be Doomsday. Our hands <laughs> our, our hand is a significant degree worse when our ancestral gets to rest. But um I'm gonna go with Hold open flood. Oh my god, I'm so dead, aren't I? Uh, maybe I have to play Urza Saga to speed up my chance to get Black Lotus and play Citadel. We'll go down on Flusterstorm for a turn. I guess we should just bobble our we could we could bobble ourselves and see what's on top to make our decision. The problem with bobbling is we lose out on academy value. Feel like they could kill us through a fluster. Maybe that's unlikely. So like, there's a line here where I go, Saga, go. Draw Moxen, then when I have Moxen Opal Academy, that I can make a Saga and hold open Flusterstorm, and then my Saga will go off getting Citadel. 
Maybe that's a dream world. It's a shit draw. I'm going to just go with Island Hold Up Fluster, but I think that there's a chance I'm, I was supposed to just play Saga. I hope I don't die. Well, I didn't die. No, they might not be on Doomsday. They might be on DPS or something. That's a pretty good draw, though, isn't it? Yeah. That was my initial thought. That was my initial thought. The thing that I'm worried about is if they have Dark Petition, then I do want to have Fluster, right? Like, if, if their card is Dark Petition, then holding Fluster is correct. And it Fluster actually does something. Gosh. But maybe that's, like, not a line, an avenue worth thinking about. Does Tan I don't think Taniguchi plays either of those two decks. I thought Taniguchi played like Bug. It could be like Bug with main deck duress, right? So, like, yeah, I think there were definitely two ways to approach it. You could have gone Saga fast track to Black Lotus. Okay, it's Doomsday. Just a doomsday with a main deck to us. In that case, I do think I would have rather gone Saga on turn one and just not held open Doomsday because who gives a shit? It's not, uh, it's not, it's not hold open Flusterstorm because they're just going to have too much mana and they'll just beat Flusterstorm anyways. Am I getting like, what is happening? Sure. Okay, yeah, I guess it could be Death Shadow. That's fair. No, I think countering this is silly. They just Ancestral. They have... I, I don't think countering this is good. They're going to be limited on mana next turn because they gushed. I don't know. It probably doesn't matter what we do, to be perfectly honest, but I do think that I might have just completely misplayed by not taking my initial saga line, though. Kind of unfortunate. All right. I mean. I don't really know what's happening, to be perfectly honest, but... Oh, they have an Oracle... Can they play an Oracle afterwards? I assume they can. So I have to counter this because I can't counter an Oracle. It's an interesting way to go about it. This is their way of getting Doomsday to resolve. No. What is happening? How do you have so many cards and I'm not dead? I still don't really have much going for me though, right? Um, best we can do is that costs f <laughs> how much? I feel like the best we can do is draw into blue card force, right? If I make an artifact, that's three artifacts, is four mana, is f exactly enough.
get dazed or something, but... Forced? I, I don't know. It, we, we, we've been out of this game so long. It's been so long since we had any chance in this game. I actually think we probably lost on the duress. Like the duress was probably the killing blow, but we're just sitting here trying to figure out why we're not dead. Doomsday. Doomsday. All right. Interesting. I don't think I would go for the ancestral. Yeah, they got you just gone. Okay, you have to go for the ancestral. All right, sure, sure, sure. I mean, Doomsday is definitely one of the best decks in Vintage. It's There was a point in time where Doomsday was the best deck in Vintage. It was around May. Um, I don't think Doomsday is currently the best deck in Vintage. But it's definitely very good. I mean, there's a lot of blue decks that are just a pile of restricted cards. You could say the same about PO, right? All right, we got Doomsday. Mostly this duress absolutely ruined us. That duress was something else. Are we bringing Karn here? It's not. This looks fine. Maybe I could trim a land and bring in a Karn, like an island. Mm. That didn't sound good. It's always nice to get a good thrashing by Doomsday on the on the recording so that I can, can continue my mounting evidence. Know what I should do? I should go back into all my VODs and take all the Doomsday matchups where they where they murder me and put it into one video with funny music and on two times speed. Four times speed. Eight times speed. I actually don't have my VODs saved like that anymore. It'd be a lot of work. Yakety Sax music? Yeah, Yakety Sax music. That's the one. That'd be fun. <laughs> Why would I need to speed it up? Because there's so many instances of it happening. It will just last forever. Doomsday? Yeah, yeah, you can totally play Hull Breacher in this sideboard, in PO sideboard as a... Uh, you can also play, like, in PO specifically, you can play Opposition Agent. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's totally reasonable. This is a sick hand. Oh my god, this hand is a beautiful. It's beautiful. It's a little unbeautiful because I wanted to be able to hold open Flusterstorm and Mist Up on turn one and play Saga, but I don't think I can. I didn't realize that. Does that mean I have to change my plans or just hope I don't get turn one killed? It's pretty hard to get turn one killed with a mental misstep, right? Famous last words. I think it is imperative to play Saga on turn one, though. I want to establish the clock as fast as possible. All right, so if I die turn one through Mental Misstep, then we can say maybe I misplay. I don't know. Hmm. 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 This is what my instinct told me. All right, I didn't die. Blessed. Uh, 
Um, does it make sense to play Academy? It's going to do less damage, so probably not. I think I would rather play Seat. All right, well, I feel pretty good about where we're at right now. Consult. I feel like I should just let that happen. Um, I played Mana Crypt on turn one so that I had Day's Mana for Mental Misstep. That's not true. Uh, so that I had... Double days mana. I don't, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. They just demonic consulted for preordain and lost an oracle. Interesting. I had some reason to play mana crypt on turn one, but I don't remember what it was. Maybe there wasn't a reason. Helps me play around mind break trap. Got him. Got him. I figured it out, Mark. I figured it out. I played around mind break trap. They got a preordain. Ooh. Ooh, I don't think I think I'm not supposed to counter anything that doesn't kill me though. Like just going I guess I kind of wish I kept an A needle so I could needle Street Wraith, huh? Cuz now I really have nothing to need to get out with my Saga. I guess I have a top. Top's pretty good. It's probably better anyways. Oh, no fear. I don't know. Go off, fam. Do, do your thing. I think I should have countered Brainstorm. This is possible. It's possible. This is the most unlucky Doomsday player I've ever seen. Like, they just cast a bunch of Preordains instead of killing me on turn one. I've never seen Doomsday do this. Is this a normal Doomsday draw that people have been telling me about? Ooh. So maybe I don't need a top now. Ah! Like, maybe I'm supposed to get Manifold Key in case I hit Vault. I have a Thought Cast as my single draw spell. That's probably not good enough. I probably want a top. That's a good draw. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I guess I can delve a little deeper here. Ooh.
well, why did I do that? Whoops. Yeah, I should have done that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah, that was bad. I miscounted there. Six. Yeah, I miscounted. Um. Yes, I'm aware. Rubik's cube. I said that. They're just accepting their fate. I appreciate that in a doomsday player. I wonder if I can get them both to become eight nine nines. Sure, whatever, don't care. I'm just gonna kill you. I should have just floated the mis uh, dispute on top. I got greedy with the thought cast, obviously. Uh, huh, nope. Try again. Nice mental misstep, bro. Definitely don't mental misstep this top. Doesn't make any sense. Nope. Did let them uh, force and not die, though. <laughs> okay. No, no, we weren't tapping Academy. We were just we were just leaving the dispute on top and passing the turn. That's the best line. Because then my Academy taps for additional mana with top. It's much better. Oh, you're saying on their turn. Yes. On their turn. Yes. Agree. Agree to agree. Yeah, that's the kind of hands that I think theoretically are the put Doomsday out of out of like those are the kind of hands where the saga decks really should be preying on Doomsday, where you have a saga, uh, a saga as an uncounterable instant speed clock, and you have a bunch of counter magic. Um, the sand sucks, right? Saki? Sucky. I don't think this hand's good. I think we just bottom this. This is better. It is better. Just get rid of seats. Sorry, let's see. One, two, three, four. Just get rid of seat. And then I have soccer with a force. And I could always luck into maybe casting Thought Monitor, depending on my draw. I think the Saga is better than the Seat, because I think I'm not casting Thought Monitor. I'm likely forcing with Thought Monitor, and that way I can um, play Saga and have a clock. It's a kind of the shittiest draw, isn't it? All right, um, sequence this around days and around trap. I do think it's worth playing the bobble in the trap to represent blue. I guess, yeah, yeah. Uh, hmm. There's theoretically a world where we want to use this bobble so that we can have an additional blue card. We lose our metal craft, but we have an island to follow up with. Hmm, I'm not sure on the answer to that. That does consign us to never casting Thought Monitor, but that might be fine. A downside to cracking would be if we draw Fluster, then I want to be able to hold open Fluster and Force. 
So I'm going to hold through another island. Yeah, I think we're going to have a hard time in this game, but I'm going to just hold and go for Saga token with force backup, not flusterstormable, theoretically. And Jesus Christ, okay, never mind. All right, um, I don't know. I, I don't think I, I mean, I mulliganed and my hand was sus. I don't know. What's a guy to do? Hopefully I can force their doomsday and I can't get fluster stormed. So yeah. <laughs> yes. Pretty sure I need to force this doomsday. I don't think I can let it result. Okay, it doesn't matter. Cracking Bobble doesn't actually get me anything. Like Cracking Bobble. I I don't know. I don't know how I didn't I already say everything? I don't really know what else to say. There's like a lot of downsides to Cracking Bobble in terms of mana production, in terms of saga tokens. Um Days Fluster. I guess you theoretically could make a Saga token and crack a bobble and maybe draw into Fluster, but then you're tapping out, so I can't pay for Fluster, so it's not very good. Yeah, my hand was just not powerful enough to beat Doomsday. I don't know if that means I was supposed to mulligan it. I, I, would, I would think probably not, but... I basically drew terribly. The two islands were the worst two draws in my deck, right? I see what the bobble would have drawn out of curiosity. Okay. Hmm. I I think the islands just did us no favors. I mean, our hand wasn't powerful to begin with, so drawing into two blanks is just no go. Um, I'm just making this recording to let YouTube know that round four was not played. My opponent had a uh, bad record and was conceding the league. So uh, there will be no round four. We will move straight to round five. Boom. This is round five now. Final batch of our vintage league with eight casts. Nothing has really been crazy. It seems all of the things that I thought are, are true about eight casts. Let's see if we can't win one more match. This hand has no blue mana. This hand has... Pretty solid hand, yeah. Slow hand. It's a slow hand, but um, it's a hand for sure. So what we can do is we can play turn one Saga and then um, turn two Time Vault. And if they, they have to counter the Time Vault... But mm, is that really the best option? Now we could just go turn one time walk, turn two tinker, get tinker countered, and then play a time walk, time vault on the following turn. Runs into Dak, I guess. I guess I don't need to use Seat. I can just use Academy. But then I can't play my Saga. No. That's still fine. I could still Tinker. I think we just use our Tinker as bait. And then we resolve Vault King. Mm. 
Does that change anything? It certainly lets me tinker without playing a land drop, which lets me maybe just go for Citadel. Um, we got rolled by Doomsday, but besides that, we're two and one with one concession, so it's been fine. Um, we won a Golos matchup. We probably should not have won. The Golos matchup felt really bad with Null Rod. This just resolves. All right, well, in that case... Oh, it was nice playing Magic the Gathering with you, opponent. I will see you in game two. Tinker Citadel things. I mean, I think it's still a bad Citadel deck, yes. I don't know. I don't know. What do you want from me? <laughs> that's, that's still a true statement. All right, so our opponent has represented Jeskai, but that does not mean they are actually on Jeskai. Um, no, I don't think that's true. Like, having your Citadels be some percentage chance bricks is very bad. I don't, I don't, I don't know how else to explain this. Um... Uh, Tinker is not the broken card. I disagree. I disagree heavily. I actually think Citadel is the broken card. Um, Tinker was pretty reasonable and answerable pre-Citadel. wasn't that good. But once Citadel happened, then all of a sudden Tinker's good. Slasher, what do you want me to take out versus possibly just guy? I assume we want to bring in. <laughs> so the problem is not being able to win on the spot is like um if it was any other format, I don't think it's a big deal. But because it's vintage, if you don't win on the spot and you pass the turn, your opponent might just kill you. So, uh, you know, that's my thoughts. I think passing the turn is bad. Killing your opponent is good. Oh. Oh, it's Rug Oath. Noted. I mean, you could be passing without doing nothing. It's not like you have a lot of free counter spells in your deck. You only have four. It's not like you're playing a bunch of negations. Yeah, but you have two tops. You have a much lower. I think you have a, you have like five tutors. I don't play four fluster in my PO decks in the main. I think like you're 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 that like. I don't think you've played a lot of PO, but I think the, the difference is like very, very visible if you play a bunch of matches with PO and a bunch of matches with 8 cast. So. I don't know. Whatever we do, it doesn't really matter. Our opponent's playing Oath, it's a win for us. Was that rude? Should I not have said that? <laughs> Should I not have talked about Oath like that? I just don't care. As long as I sequence correctly, I feel like an Oath just doesn't matter.
Like, I should just go for a vault key, right? So, I have to play around Pyroblast and Flusterstorm. I, yeah, I probably should have spun top. I clicked through that one, probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry, I'm like kind of unenthused. I don't really care. <laughs> and that's what happens when it's 11.20, I guess. I will try to play the rest of this match with thought and, and poise. Um, will I try to play the rest of this match with thought and poise? How do I beat Fluster? The answer is Time Walk and Don't Cast Tinker. If they counter this, then I can just Tinker a Citadel and it. Again, oh, wow, they're going to Pyroblast this? I feel like at that point we should just Tinker a Citadel, right? Is there any chance we lose this game if we Tinker a Citadel here? I mean, I could just force it. Then I do need to probably find a blue card to beat a force back up. I'm at 20. I have a top. I should be able to win with a Tinker Citadel. Does it make sense to get rid of mana? Well, I can't time walk anymore. So there's no need for mana crypt, right? It's just going to be a problem if we take infinite turns. Probably just draw through. Yeah, okay, sure. Top makes everything very easy. So yeah, a nice 3-1 league here. Um, things we learned. I was pretty... I, was, I mean, obviously both of our Oath matchups were cakewalks. Cakewalks? Is that a fucking... Is that a, is that a thing? Cakewalk? What did I just say? Is that a phrase? Why does it feel weird? Okay, all right. I thought I was losing it. I thought I was losing it. <laughs> okay, chat. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Obviously, both our oath matchups were cakewalks. Um, our doomsday matchup theoretically should be pretty reasonable, but we got doomsday. Our hand was like, pretty bad we mulliganed and we didn't draw cards we needed um and so we ended up losing but i do think doomsday was pro is probably fine and then our golos matchup looked like it was very bad um our opponent did have like a pretty solid hand where they had mana crypt thorn into workshop no rod but the fact that golos is playing four no rods is concerning to me for a deck like this very concerning um, I kind of wish we did played two decks that weren't Oath, so that we could have gotten a little bit of a better look at the deck, but it's obviously very powerful, and if you have slasher-style luck, the, if you have good opening hands, it does some powerful things, so. Yeah, I mean, 
I can't say I can't really say too many bad things to be honest. It was a pretty solid showing for the deck. The deck is putting up very strong numbers and maybe a decent choice moving uh towards Eternal Weekend depending on how the metagame adapts. If the metagame adapts in a way where pyroblast decks became common or heavily played, this deck could have issues. Um Obviously, I feel like the best cards against this deck are Null Rod, Collector Oof, and um, Pyroblast. A nice part about this deck is I think it plays against Flusterstorm very, very well. When I was playing P.O. versus this deck, I never brought in more Flusterstorms because Flusterstorm not hitting the uh, artifact and creature-based threats was was just really, really bad. Um and theoretically, if your opponent's not interacting with your Seed of the Cyanide in um, a way that's really problematic for you, then you probably are winning that matchup. Like, for instance, if your opponent is playing a PO deck, you should probably be favored in the PO mirror. Um, but in, in decks where your opponent is interacting unfav like unfavorably with you, like Collector Roof decks, Force of Vigor decks, though you have four Fluster Storm that might help with Force of Vigor, um pyroblast decks um that's where i would be concerned uh i would question how your dredge matchup is i would be concerned with dredge probably doesn't seem like that would be very good But it's probably f hand dependent, and if they're playing Force of Vigors dependent, um, yeah. I mean, this is not. So this is it's weird because this deck is my style of deck, and historically, I've played a lot of these kind of decks. I have just been become increasingly disillusioned with the card state of the Cyanide. Um, it's actually pretty funny if you look back. If you were to go to oh i'm not the metagame that's fair that's fair goldfish you know i i am not the metagame i agree if you were to go back to like page nine here and you were to look at vintage dailies from like 2017 my first couple of ones uh i was playing four seed of the cyanide um tezzer at the seeker two voltaic key time vault x so and thought cast. Um, but the real the real change, obviously, from that point of view is um saga. And it's just it's weird because there's a push and pull where this deck suffers from it probably even more than Pio does with Saga. Um, where if you get null rotted, like theoretically, Saga can beat oof but only if you have the mana to activate your saga. If you don't have the mana to activate your saga, your saga becomes a vanishing land, a vanishing waste. Um, so I, I do like that there is at least four islands, but I have some issues in that cat in that, um, in that stance as well. But I think this deck is better than I probably gave it credit for a while back. Like a while back, I said, like, before it was putting up numbers, I was like, man, see the Cyanide deck. That was also the time where Bug was 15% of the metagame, so things were a little different. Bug is on a downward trajectory with poor win rates and less play. So mm, maybe this is coming into, this is, you know, this has obviously been rising in stock, but it also could hit a Pyroblast meta and fall in stock again. So, yeah, if you don't mind the ups and downs of playing a seat of the cyanide deck then i think this is a pretty reasonable deck to be playing in the um upcoming major tournaments which is eternal weekend in uh probably less than a month's time at this point i would assume yeah so if you're watching this on youtube make sure that you like comment and subscribe help me boost the algorithm get me some more followers i appreciate that we're actually nearing some big numbers on um on youtube and on uh, Twitch, almost 3,000 followers on Twitch and almost 2,000 subscribers on YouTube. So if you can help me out with some follows and some, some subscriptions, uh, that would be great. If not, no worries. And I'll see you in the next video.